Good morning, and God welcomes us all to this Good Friday service. May we now join our voices and hearts together as we celebrate God's presence in the midst of whatever we may be going through. Here in the midst of the pandemic, staying as safe as we can, we come to worship you. We come to oh. the Lord of yes. and the of all in our Here in a season of being apart, we come to remember you. We come to Here in this time, when almost every day has seemed like a holy Friday, we come to place our broken hearts into your shattered one, our God. We come to
God who has shared in every single one of our tears, here in these moments of prayer and meditation, as we listen to familiar words. You call us for peace and days to remember the suffering as we have walked our lonesome valleys these months And even though we have a greater appreciation of this holy season of rejection and suffering and uncertainty. We have struggled so hard to find words of hope, of wonder, of trust in these uncertain times. God in community, holy in one on this day of grief and loss, which may mean more to us than ever before. We lift our prayers to you in the name of the one who suffered and died for us this day and who teaches us to pray, saying, A reading from Psalm 22, verses 1 to 8, and 19 to 21. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, in you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me.
The second reading is the plot to kill Jesus from Mark 14, 1 and 2. It was two days before Passover and the festival of the unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Reading from Mark chapter 14, verses 10 and 11. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him.
Jesus is betrayed and arrested. It's Mark 14, 43 to 50. Immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when they came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood, stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting his ear off. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. Jesus faces Pilate from Mark chapter 15. 
As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bounded Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked them, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner to them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas to them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and ha after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Oh, 
Jesus is crucified and dies. Mark 15, verses 21 to 39. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry Jesus' cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place they called Golotha, which is, means the place of a skull. And they offered him mixed wine, wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with, and with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priest, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled with a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to, to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come down and take him down. Then just Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. As the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. Here ends the reading.
Let us pray. Oh God, what can we say on this Good Friday? We have nothing to say except to just do our best to reflect on your word, which sustains us and gives us life in our ups as well as in our downs. And now may the words of my mouth, our meditation together, as well as our listening skills, be acceptable to you, God, because you are our Redeemer. Amen. Have we ever been there? Have we ever been to the city of Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani? Have we ever been to that city of my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalm 22, which is known as a Psalm of David, begins with David, heartbreaking words that were quoted by Jesus when he was in pain on the cross. And Jesus says in Mark 15, 34, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Imagine the situations David and his great, 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 great grandchild. We can keep on saying great, great, great because there are so many generations between David and Jesus. I would say approximately 48 generations and around 1,000 years between them. So imagine the situations David and Jesus must have found themselves in that caused both of them to cry out to God in this manner. David felt forsaken, abandoned. And we even hear him say, why are you so far from helping me, oh my God? Jesus doesn't say these words, but we could hear these words in between the lines of, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So Jesus also did feel abandoned, forsaken. David also felt ignored, unseen. Is anybody around here aware that I exist? We hear him say, oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear me. Why, why? Jesus, when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Also felt ignored. Have we ever been there? Have we ever been to that city known as the city of my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have we ever looked up into the heavens and wondered why it seemed that God had just abandoned us? Oh, God was just ignoring us. To all of us, I would like to say this morning, we are welcome to the world of Jesus and his ancestor. David, 
David and Jesus faced a lot of pain and asked the question that we all ask, the question that visit our homes, our lives frequently, and especially this past year. Does God really care about what is going on in my life, in our city, in our province, in our country, and in our whole world? We are told in the scripture that regardless of how things appeared for these two individuals, David and Jesus, Regardless of the struggles they were going through, they both knew that God can always, always be trusted when all seems to be lost and even when everything is great. But at a time when everything seems to be, seemed to be lost for David and Jesus, they still trusted God. What do we see? In Psalm 22, notice that for every sorrowful cry David expresses, there is a character. There is a quality of God mentioned that rescues David from low spirit. In other words, from a feeling of sadness and hopelessness. And through it all, David discovers that God is holy. God is faithful. God is a matchless helper. And God is a savior. What about Jesus? Does he also agree with David that God is holy? God is trustworthy. God is dependable. God is a matchless helper and God is a deliverer. Oh yes, Jesus does agree with David. When we go to the gospel according to Luke, in chapter 23 verse 46, we hear that in addition to the words that are mentioned in the gospel according to Matthew and even Mark, the words my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In addition to these words, we could add these words. Jesus shouted before he took his last breath. Father, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hand. In other words, Jesus is saying, I place myself within your care, O oh God, regardless of what is going on in my life, just take care of it on this Good Friday. Both David and Jesus knew that what they were going through, their challenges, their struggles were just a Good Friday. But Sunday was sure to come. I don't know what pain or struggle you may be facing or going through this morning. And what questions that pain and all struggle might be causing you or even all of us to raise. But here's the good news. No matter how long, no matter how long our Good Fridays may be, no matter how long our stay may be in that city of my God, my God, why have you forsaken me or us? The good news is that Sunday 
is sure to come right into the city where we are found in right now. Have we ever been to that city? In these are moments of uncertainty and loss, let us remember that Jesus became one of us, not to shame us, but to save us, to be with us in every moment, especially in the moment like the ones we have been enduring. Let us pray for God's children everywhere, for those clergy and lay leaders struggling to be faithful, to, become, to continue to be God's people in these times of fear and uncertainty and together we say for those churches which have closed and for those who do not know when they will reopen if ever god whose gift to your people is that community 
of faith, which has faced challenges in every age. We pray that we may continue to serve you, your people and your world, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray for our world, for all the nations around the globe, for the leaders on all sides, that they may have the foresight to act with true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve, that they may seek the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks, that they may know your peace as they strive to work together to achieve it on earth. Let us pray for all who have suffered during this season of pandemic, for those who were infected, hospitalized, and especially for those who have died, for those who have lost jobs, savings, pensions, homes, and belongings, for those who have spent hours, days, weeks on the front lines, in hospitals, in nursing homes, in residential facilities, and homes for the disabled. For all who have been forgotten in these moments, and for all whose lives of justice and poverty are ongoing pandemics, that have no end, that they might all know God's comfort and hope, conduit of these graces. Let us pray that out of these plagued moments, from the ashes of our unfulfilled dreams, from the pain of all we have lost, that we will not long to return to those days when we thought only of ourselves, when we ignored those living in forgotten neighborhoods when we closed our eyes to the injustices, when we turned deaf here to cries for help, when we hoarded rather than shared, when we walked past closed stores, restaurants, schools, businesses, without giving a thought to those who no longer work there. Comfort of the ages, cradler of the lonely, embracer of the grieving, strength of those too weary to take another step. Be with every person in every place. God, who holds every day in your hand. God, who has always led your people into new lives, new dreams, new ways of serving. 
May we continue to let our compassion increase. May we continue to stand up to the powerful. May we continue to learn from the vulnerable. May we continue to trust in you always. May we continue to walk with you, even when the way seems uncertain. Amen. Listen to your children pray. Oh Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love. Send us power, send us grace. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this world. Listen to your children pray. Oh, send us love, send us power, send us grace. We go forth into a world filled with darkness, but we are not alone. The one who holds all life, or should we say the web of life, and the mystery of death is with us. We are not alone. We will wait in hope. We go forth into a world filled with grief. But we are not alone. The one who holds all hope and the mystery of our faith is with us. We are not alone. We will wait in hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death. We are never alone. The one who holds all love and the mystery of new life is with us. We are not alone. We will wait and hope. Amen.